What is going on guys? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is that you may be listening to this on the various platforms, watching it on YouTube, or even if you're joining us live on Twitch. Um, we've got a pretty good episode, I think, lined up for you today, uh, and next week actually. I just realised who we've got on next week as well. well. I'll cover that more at the end. Um... This week, joining myself and my co-host, Enrage Kitsune, if you want to say hello, Kit. Hey, folks. We have the wonderful Mr. Chaps28. Do you want to say hello, chat? Hello, hello, hello. So, um, just to get it out of the way, I'm going to switch over to the content screen so we can actually see what I've got on my screen right now. Um, the music we came into... Uh, as usual with the podcast, it was part of the plan to people who are long time listeners of the podcast or, you know, may have listened to previous episodes will know we had the lead singer of part of the plan on episode four. It goes by Rafebound CA and you can use exclamation point Cody or exclamation point P-O-T-P in my chat for, um, you know, a bit more information, a couple of links uh, to them. Here's the guys right here in another one of their, you know, music videos. Um, but yeah, they basically said they look forward to t seeing what creators come up with using their music. So, um, you know, they basically said, have at it. Everybody can use it. And Rafe is a, a pretty good, good friend of mine. Uh, and you've become pretty close friends with him as well, right, Kit? Since the podcast. We did with him? Uh, yeah, yeah, swing by every now and then. Always, always a good guy to chill with. So, um, this particular episode is actually a res as a result of uh, Witty, who we had on not long after we had on Rafe. I think it was, uh, was it episode five, six, Kit? I can't remember. Let me have a look at the notes real quick. Five. Um, five. So, yeah, <laughs> literally, the literally. Spreadsheet. Yeah, literally the, the episode after. Um, he asked, we asked him, who would you like to see on the podcast? Um, and who would you like to be featured on if you ever like came back on? Um, and your name came to his, his mind and he suggested you, chaps. So. Um, and it, oh, just wow. so hap <laughs> it just so happened, I think that was the week, if I remember correctly, that was the week that you and Pornstar raided me on the exact same day. <laughs> <laughs> Might I say well, thank you very much well. once again for that, and that was great. <laughs> it was great fun that day. Um, thanks, Kirby. Same to you, bud. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get into who are you, chaps, and what do you do um, like in your streams, and uh, how long you've been on the platform, etc. Okay, wanna... well, my name is Sam. My, my full name is uh, Sam Chapel, so that's where the chap ah. from. Uh, all my partner's family call me chaps. Uh, all my friends from uni and stuff call me chaps. Um, so there's only a select few people, but uh, I've always gone by chaps. I used to always have it on my uh, back of my England shirt. And 28, don't know why, it's just my favourite number. You never know why your favourite number is your favourite number, but that's just my favourite number. So uh, that's why I've uh, chaps underscore 28. That's why I've always been. That was my uh, PSN name when I obviously first created that years and years back. Um, I'm basically just a guy who likes to play video games, really. Like um, like most of us. <laughs> I started out on... Yeah, like, like everyone. I'm just a guy that wants to play video games and just wants to play video games with other people and just chill, you know? Um, I started um, my journey um, about, a, I'd say it's about a year, going on a year and a half. Um, I, I've been on Twitch years ago when I used to do it off my PlayStation, um, like, like everyone that wants to first get into content creation mm. and stuff like that. Like I've seen people do it and all I had was a PlayStation, a monitor and have at it sort of thing. So I used to do like little like... Um, sort of uh streams for for trials and raids and stuff when i when i was uh, a good few years back now um obviously it didn't take off then obviously i had a full-time job so i couldn't really keep that up but um it we moved into our house about two years ago and i set up a desk and set up a space where i wanted to 
eventually um, start creating content, start streaming and stuff like that. And I put it off for a long time. I'm don't 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 laugh at this, but I'm actually quite a nervous person. I'm quite a shy person. It uh, yeah. may not come over in my streams, um, but I am actually quite a shy and nervous person sometimes. Um, I, I can seem quite confident, but um, I can put things off if I want to. So uh, <laughs> I kind of put off uh, streaming. And I don't know, one day it just flicked a switch in my head and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm just, just going to do it. Um, I went over to Mixer, though, and I started on Mixer. I was on Mixer for about five months, and um, I thought, all right, I'm going to give Twitch another go. Um, this was before the collapse of Mixer. It was about sort of a couple months before that, so I didn't yeah. go down with Mixer. But um, so you I got lucky. Sort of Mixer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got lucky. Yeah, I, just sort of, I didn't feel like I was like um, left stranded with no paddles, sort of up Ship Creek or anything like that. So yeah, I kind of um, I, I moved back to Twitch, and and for me, fortunately. It worked out quite well. Um, did a few, did a few um, days. Got my affiliate ship quite quickly, uh, sort of within the week. Um, had a wow. couple of big raids, um, which was awesome. From one from Jason Iperton, um, who some people might know, chat, but he's obviously um, he's one of the sort of uh, one of, one of the more well known people within the Destiny. He's one of the yeah. He's um, one of the OGs in Destiny. Yeah, and he's yeah. he's been. Yeah, he's been doing it for a long time. Um, he's been he's been doing it for like four years, and I've been a part of his community for for about three years. Um, and he happened to notice me one day, and on the day of our affiliateship, when we um, when we got it, he came over and raided, and it kind of just spun it on the head, just literally. Um, I mean, you kind of don't know how to do it when you're sort of starting out. You've got like three four viewers something like that you just you, you've met a couple of friends and you start streaming that's that's how it begins yep. really isn't it um <laughs> and it kind of turned it up on its head and it was it was a, it was a wonderful moment for me and um i like it, that 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 moment that feeling i had inside was kind of like yeah i just i you know i like this i like this and it, it wasn't because of obviously um i i, I very much like get off on sort of good feelings and stuff like that like anything i always find like subs or anything like that that that, that will come and go that will come and go right that that, that is what it is but yeah, it's all the good feelings um why i do what i do um why i do a lot of sherpering and stuff like that because I, I get off on the feelings of other people like being happy them getting their loot them, them achieving stuff um people sort of pushing their boundaries and stuff like that so um it was quite a moment for me and as i say like um it certainly solidified the fact that i wanted to do this um, I just got goosebumps, and... by the way, when you was like, I get off on the fact that I, I'm enjoying, I'm helping people, I enjoy helping them get their loot and stuff, because it's pretty much what I do. <laughs> like, I enjoy yeah, doing exactly, that, but yeah. at the moment, it's like, how? Um, so it's one of yeah, the things I'm... that I've struggled with since moving to PC, because me and Kitsune used to be in um, a clan on Xbox that was all about, like, yeah. sherpa and stuff, to the point where... I was in it for maybe three weeks and they put me into the, the clan's Sherpa training program, like learning every aspect <laughs> of every raid in Season of Arrivals. Yes, I learned nine, learned like nine raids or seven raids, however many we had at that point in the space of yeah. three, in the space of three weeks, I learned every encounter and every part of every encounter. So obviously like, garden uh harpy boss i can do i could do eyes gambit and like learning to alternate if one failed because of uh somebody dying or something like yeah um so i thank them well, I, I immensely know, for Sh that sharing sharing's, but... a, sharing's a, a great feeling it really is and um, yeah definitely i mean i didn't start it straight away we we started it um we started uh, doing it when it was moments of triumph um so when they brought back all the raids and doing all the raids and the hard mode raids etc etc just getting everything done um for the moments of triumph so that's obviously leading into beyond light and um me and a good friend of mine um who i know through obviously jay snipeton's um sort of community uh never blinking um uh aussie friend of oh mine. yeah i've seen um seen never we, blinking. we started we st yeah, we started doing them together and we started helping people through and it was it was uh sort of sherpering people first time 
um, helping people through the raid. Maybe they don't have as many people to um, raid with to try and get their anarchies and stuff like that. So yeah. the Inspire of Stars, for people that had never done it before, Inspire of Stars is, for me, it's up there. It's up there in Destiny as one of, one of the best boss encounters uh personally um because of the mechanics i'm very much heavy on mechanics and when, when it yeah. gets destiny um I, lo I love those encounters and um yeah we we just helped a lot of people out and i kind of i kind of went on from that and i, I just can continue doing it and it's gone from raids to obviously um now doing gms and helping people with gms and stuff so um yeah a year on and and i'm still loving what i'm doing and i'm going to keep pushing and um yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for another fantastic year. And unfortunately, we've, we've had a we've had a terrible year um, due to COVID and stuff like that. But for me, it's been an opportunity to really strike while the iron's hot. I've got all this spare yeah. time at home. I work in a restaurant for a living. Um, I can't work. So for me um, to yeah to, to take this moment uh, where otherwise i'd be sitting on my butt watching netflix all day <laughs> more than likely um I've, I've spent it um accomplishing something else which i'm i'm really proud of so so what is your typical schedule again um i know so you normally take like wednesdays days a week yeah, yeah so my schedule yeah. I, I do five days a week um i normally take um because my partner's also at home at the moment as well um so she I, I take a i take a break in the week um so she can work in the office um so she doesn't have to sit downstairs but um and i, I usually take sundays off I'm, I'm i'm a big um advocate for um taking proper time off yeah like i I'm, I'm i'm still not away from a screen when i'm away from the computer and stuff like that but um i'm very much an advocate of um realizing my boundaries and, and not overdoing it um so i've i've typically always taken two days off a week so yeah monday tuesday and then thursday through till saturday i normally do hey yeah. mitch um it was a good idea to make sure you know you've got some time even if it's not necessarily like away from the screen or away from the desk but just away from yeah Oh, yeah. Just away from what you're doing day to day to take some time away. And yeah, apologies for the background. <laughs> that's, that's so good. <laughs> IRL continues, right? Um, yeah. So, um, well, the yeah, point is, the point is, he's in what we nicknamed um, Desk City Desk in our City. little group of friends. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's got two brothers and a sister, and they all have desks like literally within what a meter of each other, Kit. Would you say? Well, the desk next to me is within arm's reach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then what's it? What's it like? Literally around the corner is like his his living room or something where you know his parents yeah. are chilling. So <laughs> yeah, we get some background noise, but uh, that's all good. It's usually only for the first half of the, uh, the podcast, so <laughs> should, should, should be here at some point. But I, I, I find proper time away from 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 streaming i don't know it keeps me level-headed um yeah a it keeps me level-headed b um it, it it gives me a chance to rest um streaming can be quite um anyone that does it for sort of eight to ten hours a day which i typically do and people do it much longer um it can be very knackering and, and you guys yourselves you know like it, yeah. it can be quite it can be quite draining um i don't ever want to get to the point where i feel upset with myself that i'm i'm and, and and frustrated with myself because i'm tired i'm like i'm annoyed or anything like that because i've i've maybe pushed myself too much i mean sometimes i mean there's nothing wrong with pushing yourself um there's nothing wrong with of, of, um sort of yeah really really putting your all in into into the into what you want to do whether that be content creation or whatever work line you're in but for me i i don't don't want to do that i don't ever want to um knacker myself out um i want to enjoy what i'm doing i don't want to come away from it feeling i'm super tired um like i, I not that i hadn't wished i had done that stream today but super tired thinking like oh i don't want to take tomorrow if you don't you don't i don't want to wake up the next morning thinking oh, i don't want to let people down because i've pushed it too hard and then have to be like nah guys i can't stream today i can't get online i'm just too knackered i'd like i'm not gonna be 100 yeah. i want to be 100 percent every time the way I'm 100% every time is by making sure I get proper rest. 
Yeah, I've, yeah had, so... I've had that in the past myself. Like, I've... I typically, when during the week, I will typically go from like 10 in the morning till half two. Um, generally, like, what, four and a half hours at most. Um, sometimes I'll start a little later. Like, the latest I'll start is half ten. Just so I have that minimum of four hours. That's always what I aim for is a minimum of four hours. Um, purely yeah. down to the fact that at half past two, I get off, I raid someone, I, I open their stream on my phone. So I can, you know, chat away and support and all that. Um, and obviously that's a big part of what we're trying to do with this podcast as well. Uh, which is why you'll see on my Twitter, the uh, rising tides raise all ships, like little mantra at the end. Um, and basically, like, it's just down to the fact that I've got kids. I've got two kids. I've got to go to, go, go to school, pick them up at three o'clock. So, yeah. Yeah. I have to leave at quarter three. If I'm, you know, screwing around at, you know, half past three, quarter, quarter, uh, half past two, quarter three, looking for someone to read or whatever, then it's like, at this, at that point, I might as well just go end stream and, and walk. Do you know what I mean? But I like to pass whoever's watching over to other people because then it's like, you know, I, I, I the way I see reading, and I don't know whether you will agree with this, and obviously we mentioned you've raided me in the past. Um, I see it as me turning around to someone, the person who I've raided and say, I support your content and believe that you can do more than what you are currently doing in, in a sense of viewership or whatever metrics you want to, you know, uh, measure yourself by. But it is in, in the purest sense of me turning around to uh friends that i read and go i believe in your content i enjoy it do you know what i mean yeah oh yeah yeah 100 percent. like um i mean you can obviously um when you're raiding out obviously if you're raiding someone that you've never raided before which which is really nice to do mm. um it's, sometimes it's nice to go to those those lower numbers within the community you, it might be hit and miss sometimes i mean you hear the horror stories of going over to raid someone and they're on follow only mode or and stuff like that is it, it, it the, the, there's the horrors of that like um but i've got a yeah, funny I mean, story for that <laughs> <laughs> but i think i don't know i just i just yeah you i i, I when i host out i know i'm hosting someone that i i 100 percent want to be there i want to go and support them whether i can only stay for five minutes or i stay for another half an hour 45 minutes an hour whatever it is like i'm going over there because i want to say hey like we wanted to come and say hey to that. We the lounge wanted to come over. We we wanted to we wanted to come and wish you the best sort of thing. So yeah, completely, so for, completely agree with that. You said you said the lounge there for people who don't know. Chaps's uh, community is called the Bunny Lounge, right? Yeah, the Bunny Lounge or the Lounge for sure. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, obviously, you're a member of Team Ahamkara and newly got Fush Pushers. How how long ago was that again? Like two weeks, three weeks. Uh, so fudge pushers we've been part of for no just a little longer than that now so going on about sort of uh, about five weeks but it's about a month yeah. since it was announced officially um, and then team ahamkara we've been a part of now for oh jesus let me go back uh, from i think it was about august september last last year so yeah so um, we, we've been we've been part of team ahamkara for a good sort of like um, eight nine ten months now so yeah I must say as well, I like like the little graphic you've got going now, where you like it flips around from t the the Ahamkara logo to the Fudge Pushers logo, and then back again. Like, I've... yeah, I mean, yeah, I want I want to support both um, both teams uh, one hundred percent. Team Ahamkara have been super good to me, um, super super good to me. Um, the team over there, they got some fantastic um, talent on board there um obviously um some of them some of them sort of ranging uh to obviously from from growing streamers uh making their way and, and carving their path in content creation whichever way that may be um they've got some uh um people we, we, they're starting to branch out with more variety streamers now which is really good it, i think initially it was very much a destiny themed yeah um, um well the name team, sort of gives um, off a, a destiny yeah, I mean, it obviously it does, but they, they have branched out a little bit more uh, recently, which is awesome um, yeah, to, uh, sure. to uh, people who um, don't just stream Destiny. 
um, tr stream other games that are bought more more um, uh, across the board, which is great because it's good to see how how people play other games and 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 how they play Destiny and everything like that. Um, so the bonds over there and and all the all the mods over there and everything um, have been super supportive of me. Um, and yeah, as I say, like there, there's, there's some awesome talent coming out of there. Um, they certainly pick some winners and fudge pushes as well. Again, um, I applied to that not so long ago. Wasn't sure whether I could get it or not, but um, um, yeah, well, I remember we, being we got it in there when you sort of got the the response back. It was in your chat, and you were just like, "I applied for it, didn't think I would get it, but hey, we got it. Let's go." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. yeah, I, I, same I'm, with I'm, um, quite... Granddad Granddad Gaming. He got accepted yeah, at the same we time both didn't within the same week yeah. of each other and stuff like that but i mean i'm i'm I, I i'm not gonna lie to you i'm i'm very much i'm very much a realistic person in life like if something's gonna happen it's gonna happen if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen i'm i'm I, I, i'm not sure how many people look at life like that but i'm i'm quite a realist um i'm, I'm quite humble like I, yeah I, I'm I, sure. I just I I apply I and then I await things to to take their course. Um, I'm not I'm not spiritual in any way. I'm not religious in any way. But I very much I'm a big believer in things happen for a reason. And uh, and it did. And we got into fudge pushes. And I'm I'm super hyped. And as I say, there's, there's again another team full of fantastic awesome creators. people. Yeah, um, some, I know a some, lot of people in there. Some um, still carving their way within within Twitch and and finding finding their place. Um, and some people that are just very much established and absolutely killing the market. So, um, yeah, so both on both ends, both teams are doing great. Um, got fantastic talents and yeah, I'm proud to be, uh, part of both those teams. Yeah. Sure. Um, it's funnily enough, just mentioning it. Um, I know I said I'd mention it later in the, the podcast at the end anyway, but funnily, the reason I mentioned granddad is, um, he's actually on next week. So oh, he's <laughs> I, dude. he, I asked a him dude. a couple of weeks back to to be on, and he was like, "If you could give me a bit more notice, happily." I was like, "All right." So earlier this week, when I like, well, like late last week, when I sort of hit you up and says, "Do you mind being on next week?" Um, I asked him, "Do you want to be on on the sixth? And he was like, "Done." I was like, "Cool, we, we've got that. <laughs> we got that sorted." Um. For those who some don't... time, he's an old man. He's an old man. <laughs> For those who don't know, we had one week where Kit took over the show and did a host spotlight on me, and then last week uh, we had um, a returning guest, the one of the founders of Mine and Kit's Now Clan, um, Just Wipe It, um, who you may know if you spent any time in like um, Gladstream, if you've spent any time in. Uh, cardboard Armand stream or um, Pigeon or Anubis uh, Odis 44 yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah we had him on again last week as like a last minute guest I literally asked him four hours before we went live <laughs> so yeah uh, we weren't great on organisation for the past two weeks but we Kit also had some um, like real life things going on with you know applying for jobs and stuff uh so yeah. and then i had obviously family things so it was a bit hit and miss as the organization but thankfully we're back on track and um it's good with, to hear <laughs> yeah with that being said um is there any like future projects that you want to like sort of promote uh quickly before we get into the topics well, uh future projects are well um not mainly from me um like uh later on in the year um we are looking at doing some uh, charity stuff um nothing set in stone yet we will be doing a charity event through um uh uh through um team Ahankara later on in the year uh we voted cool. on um uh, we voted on uh, sort of a charity to represent. Um, I won't say now because I'm not sure if everything's set in stone, but uh, Team Ahamkara are going to be doing a huge charity event later on in the year, uh, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, I th it's going to be a UK-based charity. Um, I know that much, but um, I won't I won't spill the beans too much. But yeah, that, that's going to be awesome. Um, this Saturday is my one-year affiliate, um, affiliate anniversary on Twitch. 
which we're really looking forward to on the channel uh, within the community. So we're going to be doing a lot of, uh, going to do some D1 raids in the morning to start the day off. Um, I know one of the topics coming up later is something we'll be doing, but opening some Pokemon cards and then um, just party games, a couple of drinks and some phasma phasmophobia uh, oh. in the evening uh, <laughs> to really, really, uh, I'm not looking forward to, but uh, <laughs> the guys want to play it, so we're going to play it. <laughs> There's no better time to play it than the evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually played it in the evening yet because it's never really worked out. So, um, yeah, I think so, maybe, uh, maybe when that one. Maybe when I see like a tweet or something announcing the Team Ahamkara thing, I might have to reach out to someone then and see if someone wants to come on and like promote it uh, to people yeah, that may absolutely, not. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you let me know and I, I can pass you to the right people. Okay, okay. Right, let's get yeah. into the topics we've got at hand then today. Uh, firstly, for those who didn't know, unfortunately, um, sp Spanish comedian who is responsible for the Keck W emote on um, Better TTV has died uh, yesterday at the age of 65. You know, obviously, it's a, a sad thing for his family and stuff, but the fact that uh, one of the things I said when we first found out about it, I was chilling in Katie Cat stream, and I said, Twitch better make it a global emote at this point. Like, take it off of Better TTV. Let's make it a global emote, like in memoriam, um, because you know pretty much everybody has it active anyway. Let's face it. Um, yeah, as know, Odis is putting in the uh, the chat, the uh, solidus lease. All, all, all salutes. Yeah, for damn sure, my friend. But yeah, um, absolute legend. You know, a lot more people knew of him because of the meme i personally only knew of him because of the meme didn't realize he was a comedian or anything but every time somebody watches that clip of him on that show where the keck w came from i just find like katie cat watched it as soon as we found out and um everybody's just pissing themselves laughing in in like the chat you know reading little she, she... english screenshot english subtitles somebody had added to the yeah. clip um, but other than that, you can't really understand, obviously, because it's in Spanish, unless there's people who were in there that were Spanish, then obviously they'd be under able to understand it. But, like, the rest of us were just, even though we can't understand it, we're pissing ourselves laughing because his laugh was so infectious. He, he, he so. was, yeah, he was, he was one of the, the few comedians, and there are a few of them, where even if you don't, entirely understand the joke like if it sort of misses through translation you still end up laughing anyway yeah but yeah for sure so... yeah yeah the infectious is the great word there like it that moment whether whether you knew he was a comedian or not whether you whether you thought it was a a, a real person being interviewed it was like just the whole moment was just infectious and yeah, I mean, but I'm sure. I, I mean, <laughs> there wouldn't be many people in life that wouldn't laugh at that 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 small moment there. So it brought brought a lot of people joy. Yeah, and then obviously now the emote will live on because everybody's still using it, and it will have increased meaning because we now know, you know, he he sadly passed away. Um, on another note, though. Uh, a more happier note, I guess, depending on how you look at it. Uh, Esports coming to the Olympics for the first time ever in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Uh, we're in yeah, the ones that have been uh, delayed till this. Yeah, they, they were supposed to happen <laughs> in 2020. That was the Olympic year. They're due, so they're still being called that. Um, ah, but they're due okay. to happen again this year. Um, but yeah, as, as, as mentioned in this article, um, the IOC announced that it'll work with game publishers to produce the Olympic Virtual Series, um, which will be the first Olympic licensed event for physical and non-physical virtual sports. So that's, you know, things like your FIFA, um, your, your, um, oh shit, I can't remember all the sport games. Rocket League? Mm. Yeah, there, there are others. I'm reading a couple of them that are on here. Yeah. Pro Baseball, yeah. uh, Unicyclist International, uh, Gran Turismo. Oh, and Gran Turismo. Well, that was the other one that was slightly different in that it's not really a traditional sport. 
like yeah, a lot of the others are. It is a, it is seen as a racing sim. So yeah, it is. It is. It is, it is a motorsport, and it's very, very simulated. So, so it, it 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 sits well to try and tie those in. Um, the all right, there's a whole world of things people don't see on the TV at the Olympics. So basically, they're gonna essentially broadcast um, <laughs> esports essentially on yes, national so, TV. Yeah, I don't know if it's specifically gonna be on national TV, but in in the way that you typically find like event highlights, or you'll find like different channels focusing on like their home athletes mm. um, and following like certain events while other events are on at the same time and stuff. With this being like an esports series. You would probably, presumably, be able to follow, like sort of like you would on Twitch, any one of the athletes or any one specific team you want, and just sort of hop around them all. You wouldn't have to look for a channel that's following your specific person. You just go, okay, I want to watch that person. Uh, pretty much what a lot of people do within the Apex, the uh, ALGS. Yeah, <sighs> but um. Thoughts on this personally? Um, I think any. I don't think they should have esports within the Olympics personally, and I'm a big fan of esports. I watch the ALGS for Apex. I used to watch the pros playing every match in Call of Duty. I used to watch Halo before I got into Call of Duty esports. Like, um,. But the fact that it could potentially bring more people that see, um, see this and go, oh, I could, I could, I'm pretty good at this game. I could potentially do that. I, I, I would, you know, how a lot of people started to be honest. Um, yeah, especially in the the smaller nations where you wouldn't have a lot of people doing yeah. that anyway. But I think, you know, people will think, okay, well, I'm in with a chance here. Yeah. You know, part participating in something huge. Yeah. Uh, thoughts, chat. I mean, it, br it brings it. It brings it brings a young audience to the Olympics. The Olympics is. Um, I d I don't know. It's it's kind of uh, in terms of viewership and stuff like that. It's always going to have a huge audience. It will. But um, I think uh, ever since Rio, um, where Rio wasn't obviously as successful um as as the london olympics etc um I, f I feel like they they may be worried in a sense that maybe um they might lose a little bit of viewership etc um and obviously video games is one of the one of the biggest money makers in in the world like it's yeah. it's, it's crazy esports is 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 nuts people go crazy for it um Bringing a sense of uh, sporting um, e-sports, e uh, but with like sports, so FIFA, etc. Gran Turismo, if it's a racing game, I don't know what other things that they would uh, include in within the whole category. But I mean, it it certainly brings a big audience to to the Olympics, gets people interested. The more people that are watching that, they're probably going to start watching other events. Um, the viewership starts going through the roof. Um, obviously, more viewership, more. more money for the olympics so um it's it's certainly a way to inject a, a younger audience in into that scene so um yeah. it, it it has to be done right like i mean it has to be done right but i if i if i see the esports or esports of sorts going into the olympics i see that being there every four years honestly um i think it would just it would it it gives it gives people from all over the world a chance to go and compete at the highest level. Um, there's probably people already training for for this sort of thing. I imagine there's already um, uh, teams being put together by by different countries around the world, uh, yeah. waiting for this 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 FIFA tournament to be to happening at the Olympics, etc. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes. Um, but I can see it being a huge thing, honestly, absolutely huge. I I would expect it to go not great this time around. Yeah, maybe a um, few people are like... But it should be... If they do it right, it should work well enough to provoke more interest the next time around because you'll have a lot more time to prepare. Yeah, absolutely. And get everything set up then. Is it equal card? Yeah. You know, especially if you know, you, you know it's coming in 
of three and a bit years time. Yeah, it'll be a true. spectacle. It'll be yeah. a spectacle. It's it's on it's on one of the biggest stages in the world. The Olympics is probably broadcast in every country in the world. Like, what a moment to to for for games to shine for people who are uh, who who. who cracked at these games who are just so good like to really get their name out there and 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 represent the country that that, that they're from and everything so i think um yeah i thought i i, I think it would be it's I not think it's be not good only gaming. it's not only that as well but looking at it in the other way with regards to like viewership right you you obviously mentioned it will bring more younger audience to the olympics potentially increasing the olympics um viewership going forward providing obviously they continue to do it but also if there is a fifa tournament if there's an organization within esports i'm just going to pluck two names out of my head that i know are in a couple of esports and that's nrg and tsm all right let's say they've got fifa teams and they want to play have their their fifa team play for a specific country because both of their players or however many players are on their fifa team are from that country for let's argument's sake say uh they're playing for the us um if the athlete going in because we'll, we'll obviously they'll have to consider them athlete esports athlete um is like rocking a tsm um name or an nrg name or something maybe there's people who haven't seen those companies within esports and go Oh, I wonder what other esports that you know they play in, and go and check them out, and then they find out. Oh, well, they're both in Apex Legends. Oh, well, I play Apex Legends. Let me go and watch them. Do you know what I mean? And it just helps esports in general get bigger. So, I personally think they need to be careful with it, but I do see them sort of helping each other out, if that makes sense. But is it going to be just because it's Tokyo and Tokyo's big into gaming and, and you know, it's one of the gaming capitals of the world is, you know, Japan in general? Like, or like you say, are we going to see it going forward in three or three years' time, three and a bit years' time in the next uh, Olympics uh, in 2024? Are we going to go, oh, well, esports is coming to the Olympics again? Wicked. Like, do you know what I mean? I think it probably will continue, but the fact that it's uh, in Tokyo this year makes it the perfect entry point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just that I don't, I don't personally want to see it be one of these because I think when no, we had London, the kind of thing, we don't did, want that. in in London, didn't we put in football because like each country gets to put in. A, t uh, a sport or something that they want to you know represent at the olympics or something and then it was like a one and, and done sort of thing i don't know i don't really watch the olympics personally but hell i i may be interested in watching it if there's a fifa te team there that i like watching do you know what i mean who knows <laughs> like i might be the fucking target audience <laughs> uh, it could, but... it could be working already it's not even aired yet. <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> Speaking of um, esports, though, there is one game that has done fairly well with regards to esports, um, which the next topic is on, and that is Valorant. The recently ties with something you said before, um, chaps about um, you know kind of making a name and and um, a moment out of things, and um, this is sort of the opposite way around: is is making something out of a moment. All right, so what happened with this kit? So, during one of his streams, um, he saw a drawing on one of the walls, um, and he kind of called it a lobster. And it clearly isn't a lobster. Uh, if we can find, if you scroll down a bit, the um, so the name of the clip was uh, lobster with a question mark, um, right. and it was twenty three thousand views. Pretty good. Yeah, you scroll down a little bit further <laughs> to the, <laughs> you'll see the actual drawing. Yeah. I mean, look, it's got some claws oh, and what? tails. Um. So <laughs> the lobster spray. 
There's just that drawing that was on the wall. Like, they probably already had the assets for it. They just, you know, move things around and stuff. But they put the name of the clip in as the title for the spray. Oh, my God. <laughs> lobster spray. That's brilliant. How did you think that was a lobster? <laughs> I, I was just thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> you, I think you just said what everybody's thinking. How in the fuck is that lobster? <laughs> I don't even know what that looks <laughs> like. Mark. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a dog of some sort. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. I don't even know. It, it looks like a kid's trying to like try and try to draw like a hyena or something. I don't know. A kid could have tried to draw a Pokemon. Could be. <laughs> Which brings definitely us on to our next one, topic. Definitely wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> definitely wasn't a water type. Definitely wasn't a water type. Oh. Intr okay, Trip. That was very well played. Go on. That was a that was a a fish for a for a a transition, and I think it worked pretty darn well. <laughs> oh God! <clears throat> so McDonald's are bringing back Happy Meals that have Pokemon cards in. Oh, when's this going? Uh, so I need these later this year. Uh, I think my fiance it's... actually told me it's like in May. Yeah, some some time later this year. It's for the twenty fifth anniversary of the franchise. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, so but they happy meals. So they're restricting yeah, so with happy meals. And where was the quote? There was a quote somewhere. Um, oh yeah, there we go. So it was wasn't really a quote. Um, but they can be restricted on how many to one. You'll get one of the card packs per transaction instead of one per Happy Meal. So if you buy seven Happy Meals, you'll just get one pack. Um, and it's to try and combat one of the problems that they had in the US when they, they did these packs. Um, yeah. You'd have people buying a load of Happy Meals in one go um, and getting like 400 cards in a single transaction. So uh, if I'm... Right in thinking, I think there's 35 cards. Uh, um, 50 in this set, it says in the article. Um, yeah. Two 50, variations for each of the 25 stars. Oh, two variations, okay. So, um, yeah, so in America, they had... Um, I, I heard a lot about this because, obviously, I, I do a bit of Pokemon myself. But, yeah, pe people were just, like, absolutely... Like, some people were doing it for the collecting reasons. Obviously, there's there's always scalpers, isn't there? There's always scalpers yeah, nowadays. Sure. Obviously, buying them and selling them for, like, $10 a pack. Maybe more. Which is I think, generally, dumb. the retail people are selling them with, like, 10 to $15 a pack. But you think you buy a Happy Meal, what I imagine costs probably, like, $3.00 you're selling it for quadruple its value pretty much um and obviously people were opening the packs and then they were selling them and obviously selling the cards for again 10 15 25 dollars for the pikachu shinies etc um and it was getting quite out of hand i know a lot of people were buying them and they were gifting the meals to homeless people which is obvious which is honestly great i mean if, if you I mean, yeah, something if you can Something like that, at least donate the food that you're not using. Yeah, um, but I can imagine there were a lot of people that were buying the food and just chucking it in the bin. I'm not saying everyone was, but I know I, I know a lot of people. I, I've got a lot of, um, a lot of friends, uh, streamer buddies and stuff that are US and collect Pokemon cards and stuff. And they were they were donating the meals to homeless people nearby and stuff like that, which is absolutely fantastic. If you want to do something like that, do a good deed as well at the same time. But um, yeah, there, there, there were certainly people that were just taking advantage of it like wholeheartedly. For, for the cash value. Yeah. The official I'm looking forward to them to come into the UK there. I was hoping they would. <laughs> the official so Pokemon channel's got a video with the music with Post Malone as well. So I know he's yeah, a big some... he's a big like gaming and, and pop culture dude as well, like Yeah, for the twenty fifth <clears throat> anniversary they did something with uh yeah, Post Malone they did something with Katy Perry as well. Um, they, they, they've gone very big for their, for their year 25. Yeah, I remember when, uh, Pokemon first came to the U UK, like, God, I was what, like, four, five? <laughs> if that? <laughs> I might have even been younger than that, holy crap. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, you're right, it's May. Um, the meals are expected to arrive in the UK from May the 19th. And no early uh, 
Yeah, until one McDonald's doesn't realize and, and puts them in accidentally. Uh, <laughs> I've worked in fast food. I've worked in fast food. I know how those joints work, dude. Like, honestly, <laughs> staff in there could yeah, care less. Yeah. Like as they're soon as they're there, the they might not be like on to time to grab them, but as soon as as soon as they're there, you'll have like groups of people who'll be like, "Oh, I'll just like put one of this to one side and take it with me on the way out." Yeah. yeah. But um, I'm trying to think of a segue for this one. I can't, to be honest. But you missed a potential one earlier when I mentioned oh. that uh that you weren't supposed to be able to get them any yeah, earlier than May nineteenth. Ah. And uh, early access. Uh, early but, access. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh well. We were still talking about the the cards. It's fine. <laughs> anyway. So, um. Yeah. As of yesterday, or April twenty eighth. Uh, for anyone who's watching this, reading, what well, uh, actually watching this or listening to this, not live. Um. That was yesterday at the time of recording. Um. Basically, if you watch 30 minutes of a streamer playing the game with Twitch drops enabled, you too can get a copy of the game, which is actually pretty good. Um, and it ties in well with like one of their plans, are because obviously it's they're doing early access, but they're trying to make sure that like the game holds up to the number of people who will be on it. Yeah, it's a great way to gauge so, your an... in interest. You know what I mean? Like, think about yeah. it. I, I got a key from you, so I've been playing a little bit myself. Uh, we were actually talking about this just before we went live with the podcast. Um, Chaps was playing it earlier. I was chilling, yeah. lurking, and, and watching here, there, and here, there, and in and out sort of thing. Um, I got 30 minutes watch time because of Chaps playing it, and I now have a key that I can give to a friend of mine. Uh, if if they want to try it, like try it out, do you know what I mean? Um, oh, you got uh, your key today, didn't you? Did yeah. you get a Steam key or an Epic Games key? Because some people have been saying they got Epic today. Yeah, I got Epic. Uh, got an Epic key so today. Yeah. They're just random drops then between Steam and Epic. They just give you one or the other. I don't know if they're random or if they're alternating them by day oh, to just try okay, and see if okay. they like distribute it between the platforms a bit. Mm. Um, I ha I have no idea, but I I know the one I got yesterday was Steam, um, and it did say on the thing that they'd be sending you a Steam key by email. So unless they're now alternating, or they've just as of today been doing both platforms randomly, I don't know. I don't know. The email I got was uh, we partnered with Epic to give out free keys for scavengers or something along those lines. Anyway, um, yeah. One thing that I am, and I asked you this question, Kit, because you usually know these, um, but I'll, I'll put it in here since we weren't on the podcast at that point, was I'm interested to see whether Epic and Steam are currently like talking to each other in a sense of if I give the key that I've got now that's Epic to somebody who I want to play the game with, will they be able to play with me because I'm playing on Steam? I assume so. And I but... believe so because of the way they handle joining parties. Yeah. Because when you log into the game, it like gives you an ID or you generate an ID um, based on like um, an account that you make with them. So it's similar to, was it Fortnite? That does all the crossplay joining through their, pla their accounts rather than the accounts you're on. No idea. I have never done... I, cross I don't know. That. Um, but crossplay is it looks like crossplay is uh, it will be a thing as well on the uh, actual release because at the bottom uh, text when it tells you like what queue you're in it does mention crossplay in the, the name of the queue ah. um, okay. so it looks like that will be a thing but obviously with it not being out on consoles for early access at the moment yeah. we uh, that yet yeah, that remains to be actually seen um, I think that's probably but... down to um Xbox PS4, you have to, like, with an early access game, you have to actually be selling it or giving it away for free and then eventually turn it into the full game. So if they was to give it away for free, people would get the free, the full game. Do you know what I mean? They'd have to do yeah. something like what Outriders did with a demo um, and then have yeah, the progression, yeah. like, pass yeah. over. Um, 
I don't know. I think a lot more games need to go the cross-play route, and we're obviously getting that later in this year uh, with Destiny. Uh, it's one thing I'm very much looking forward to because we've got, you know, people from... People so on Xbox that we've been playing we've, with, yeah. Yeah, we've got people f on Xbox that we've been playing with, uh, that, you know, we want to play with again, but we're both playing on PC now. Um, a lot of the guys in Just Wipe It moved to PC from PlayStation, so there's, you know, there PlayStation. Are still just on PS, yeah. But yeah a lot of so moved. it's like when cross play becomes a thing everybody can play with everyone that's that's going to be great and i'm i'm happy to see more and more games like outriders like potentially from what you've been saying about the queue kit um scavengers saying you know yeah we're going to do cross play um kind of think it needs to be a standard at this point now <clears throat> and yeah. um, it's getting it's getting to that point where cross play is just it's just kind of needed. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be there, but it's it's a nice addition to the game. Like, for it's... me personally, I moved from PlayStation to um, PC in terms of playing Destiny, and it didn't really like when I first moved to PC and stuff. But um, like, I'd had like no friends on PC, so I met them through obviously online communities like Twitch communities and stuff and everything like that. But for me, it's getting to the point now where it's it's just it's just a very nice quality for the game to have, right? It's yeah. it's especially it someone helps people that have just moved platforms, like you guys said earlier that you've moved from Xbox, Xbox. to PC, yeah. Um, but you've still got a bunch of people on Xbox that you still really want to play with. Like it just it just ties everything in nicely together. As long as they always keep um, competitive scenes um, separate via a toggle button, like like yeah. some games have. Um, that that separate you from playing from with console and PC. <coughs> Obviously, some people see that as a huge disadvantage. Some people don't see that as a disadvantage at all. Some people actually think consoles better because of well, this was, stuff. You yeah, get, but this was the it's thing. It's go on, finish off. Yeah, go for it. No, 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 go go for it. I was gonna say this was the thing back when I used to play a lot of um, Call of Duty before I moved to PC. I was on um, mm -hmm. Modern Warfare. And then, obviously, yeah. just before I moved to PC, uh, Black Ops Cold War, I'd have crossplay on because the way I would feel about it is, say what you will about um, aim assist or whatever. Um, sometimes aim assist can actually screw you up. Um, <clears throat> you I've think about it. If it's, think about it as two people are in front of you. Um, one goes behind cover to heal up, and you're about to kill the other guy, and then that one that was healing up pops out. And like runs yeah. across, <laughs> runs across your sight line. Your aim is being dragged by that person running because they're in front of the target you were previously shooting. It can screw you over sometimes. Yes, oh, obviously sure. in a one v one gunfight, it helps, ah, uh, immensely. But I was always one of these that was like, okay, I'm playing on a controller. I'm playing on, you know, Xbox. If I get into a lobby with PC players and I shit on them. Then it's just like, well, clearly I'm a better player than you. I I know my movement. You might have a superior, uh, like a superior way to aim. You know, you can aim more precisely. But I know my movement better than you do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're super comfortable on a controller, yeah. yeah, like I I find like you have to be pretty um competent on keyboard and mouse to be able to take someone down with a controller because we've been playing with controllers for a lot longer uh, well a lot of people have been playing on controllers a lot longer than others have on keyboard and mouse so yeah. that, that there's there's that skill gap right of of your ability with a controller that you feel absolutely comfortable with and you've you've been playing destiny for the last whatever game it is called of duty for the last five years six years however many years and then someone that's been playing on keyboard and mouse for a year might be good, but they still might not be the best. And obviously, that there's a there's a very there's a very um, huge gap between people who are competent on keyboard and mouse and people who are ace on keyboard and mouse. There is such a huge gap. Like so, I find controller on some games is is th there's no disadvantage to it. Some some people might hate on it because obviously they're playing on PC. But at the end of the day, play with whatever you're comfortable with. Um, some people See, physically can't use keyboard and mouse. But um, yeah, the, the, there's there's like you you have to come up against someone who's 
quite highly skilled on a keyboard and mouse for that for that um advantage to really kick in sometimes yeah so see that's one thing the other that... thing as well sorry the other thing as well uh specifically referencing back to crossplay and that is that whether, whether or not you're comfortable with keyboard and mouse over controller is that you might not be able to have a pc that runs the game as well as your console potentially would because mm. they are pretty good for yeah. their price range Oh, for the, sure. the, the thing the, is, as well, the new gen consoles. Yeah, the thing is, as well, you've got to think of is when a company develops a game. Say what you will about you know Destiny running at thirty FPS on Xbox One and PS4, right? And now sixty and one twenty in Crucible on Series S, Series X, and the PS5. Um, but I got my PC because. One, it was a whole lot cheaper than buying a Series S or a Series X. Um, it runs Destiny at like 90 frames per second, just when I uncap it. But I cap it at 60 because I use a HD TV, so I'm at 60 hertz anyway. You know, so there's no point in me running it at 90. Um, but. <clears throat> So going to what you just said there, Kit, it's like, yeah, well, I can run the game better than I could on my Xbox One. So I'm obviously going to play the game on the PC rather than my Xbox One. But when it comes to can I afford an Xbox Series S, which will run the game in the content that I mainly spend my time in, just as good as the PC I've got, which is like, which cost me like a quarter of the price of an Xbox Series X. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not gonna buy one of those consoles. You know what I mean? So, but they are designed. You know, the Destiny's Xbox One version of the game was designed to run on the Xbox One. Forgive all its shortcomings, like I said, of the 30 FPS and and all that, no view, field of view, and all that, like quality of life things that we see now on the new gen. And on PC, <clears throat> um, but honestly, they are built. You know, the game is built to run on that console. So, as you said, sometimes they can look better than you know, little Timmy's PC that can can barely run. I don't know, Twitch and Twitter at the same time. Do you know what I mean? That's just like yeah. an example I thought, I thought of quickly on the top of my head, but the point I'm getting at is <laughs> a, a non like PC that is designed for you know that sort of game is not going to run that game. Whereas the console, you buy it once, and you know that every game that says it's out on that console, you can play without. A, I mean, there are exceptions. Cyberpunk comes to mind, but. Um, I mean, that, there to, to further be your issues. Point, um, yeah, to further to further your point before, I mean, I I mentioned um, scavengers to you yesterday, um, and you're like, well, okay, will it even run? You know, you you got to look at like, okay, this is what I've got, this is what they say it'll run on. You know, compare them. Mm. That the names of things really don't make it easy for components trying to compare co components. Yeah, whereas. If it was on Xbox, you know, it could turn around and go, it's boom. For Xbox, it will run on Xbox, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, scavengers... Yeah, it's, it's hard sometimes to know what, what, what you can run and what you can't, and at what level you can run that game. Obviously, PCs are there to run stuff at the, the highest quality possible, but it, if you don't have a, a, a top-tier machine uh, that, that's going to run everything as you want it, um, yeah, you, you, can, you can cast some self-doubt whether you should maybe play a game on console where you know it's going to run very competently and, and it's going to run very well or play it on a machine where it, you might not be getting the best out of it. Yeah. But like one of the things, so with my machine, for instance, I, I have a i5 3570K and a GTX 770 4 gigabyte um, graphics card. So it's pretty old but it runs destiny which was what i wanted it for 
ever since yeah. then i've you know tested other games with it i've played division two um i've played uh like outriders obviously i played scavengers i've played apex i've played titanfall 2 like there's a bunch of games that i actually like really wanted to play and i'm able to or have played in the past on my xbox that i was like i want to play them again but playing on keyboard and mouse um because going back to the the whole you know thing with keyboard and mouse versus uh controller i play keyboard and mouse on on destiny i can play keyboard and mouse on titanfall when i play it and on Outriders, and I was playing when I the little bit of scavengers I did play, I played it on keyboard and mouse. I play yeah. Apex on controller. Apex why? feels really good on controller. Yeah, why? Because as you said, it feels really good, and because I am twenty eight, I've been playing games since I was five, when the original PS one came out. And I've spent 23 years building up muscle memory on a controller. So I know where <laughs> everything is easily. Whereas Apex, in the heat of the moment, I can play on the controller because, as I said, I know where everything is. I struggle on my uh, keyboard and mouse because of all the other bound boundings. I don't even use a full keyboard. I use a, a Razor Tartarus. Tartarus. And the little D D pad yeah. that's that's above my like space is what I use to move. So it's kind of like a form stick. So you could technically say, in in a sense, I'm not even playing properly, like keyboard and mouse, <clears throat> because I'm not using you know W A S and D. Or I've seen people use Q W uh, S and E or something like. I don't know. People have their own bindings, but. You know, it it works, and I can't for for the life of me find bindings that will work for me on Apex. I've tried all different yeah. manner of things, so I just stick with the controller. I had an issue yesterday where my controller was messing up. I managed to fix it, and now I'm looking at getting a new controller because I don't want it to keep messing up. Because <laughs> otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to play one of my favorite games to play at the minute. I say that as Anubis logs on to Apex. I know he's playing with uh, <laughs> Ill Physics tonight as well. So, seen it on Twitter. Oh, that that'll be exciting. Uh, speaking on things that are happening tonight, or happened tonight rather, um, just quickly, uh, we had the first of the new series of uh, sort of little shows that Twitch are doing. Um, they're calling them patch notes. Um, so there have been a couple of things. Obviously, the one we've got on screen there is that chat replies are now live. Um, we've seen these in a couple of uh, channels already uh, when they were just like doing testing and things. Um, I think where I first um, saw them was OBK Cats chat. Yeah. Uh, the first place I saw them, I think, was Aaron. Uh, was Aaron. He had them as well. Yeah. Um, but they're live everywhere <laughs> now. So basically, if you hover over a message in chat, there should be a little sort of like a reply arrow uh click on that uh it'll sort of like mention the message above your message so that like when the streamer or someone in chat is reading it they've got a little bit of context as to what the message is about yeah yeah i mean that kind of helps you uh, i don't know I, I haven't really seen it in my chat yet so um i have to sort of wait i think until, i used it i think it i used it happening. earlier in your chat i think yeah, somebody was talking about something sort of and I yeah. and then a couple of lines of text went through, and I wanted to respond to them, and I wanted to know that I was responding to them, so I clicked the the reply thing. Um, I think that's what it's like very very useful for is if is, you want is, to it's main, it's main yeah if you want to sort of because... interact with certain people um, within a certain chat, like interact with what they're saying, and there are other people talking in chat about other things, then. You we each know what the last person has said because you can check the you know the chat thread, um, <clears throat> as it were. Um, yeah, I'm. I have to see from like it's it's it sounds positive in in the sense of yeah you you like without adding someone constantly you can just reply to a thread and and have a thread going and you can have your conversation there without it really disrupting the chat and 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 convoluting it and. So I feel I feel like it's going to be good in that sense. 
I need to see it from my angle, from how I read my chat, because um, sometimes you can miss some things. Sometimes, I mean, you, you might be able to, in a sense, like sometimes it, it's not a conversation that I need to interact with. They're having a conversation by themselves, and that's what you hope from your community that they will they will yeah. just crack on and they will talk with it, with each other. Um, I like every streamer can't be looking at chat every every second. Obviously, you're trying to create content and trying to play the games. So you can't always be looking at chat, so it will be nice that they can sort of manage themselves in in a, in a way that's not going to convolute chat, but also a way for me to then check if 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 i need to reply to anything if i need to read it obviously i try and catch up on it but then i can just read the thread instead it might be really beneficial and as i say i need i need it to sort of start popping up in my stream before i can really give uh, any any feedback on it but it's it seems pretty good for for the viewer to to um yeah and i, I like the way you phrase that really especially with um this particular the topic going on was that um you know, as as content creators, we're not trying to foster, like, build a, a fan base necessarily. We're trying to foster a community, and and yeah. you know, it, it's not that they're just there to talk to you. You know, we talk to each other in in the chat. Yeah, uh, for damn sure. On, on the platform. I mean, yeah, I think that's 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 when you know that you've got. I mean, and and this, this I'm, I'm not sure if this is gonna come off and sound rude or anything, but that's when you know you've got a healthy community going that they can interact with each other not just talk to me the whole time like i, I yeah. love that people talk to me i do and 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 i want that i want people to come in and say hey and stuff like that but i don't want it just to be a billion conversations going on with me with everyone in chat like i like i mean i, I can i can figure out a few chats in my head but when you're talking to 12 different people and trying to have a conversation with 12 different people while they're writing in chat like it, it can be quite difficult so i mean it just becomes a wall of text that's, at that, that point, that's where it? that's where the health yeah and it, it kind of then i start to lose track of what conversation i'm in and like it's all that and obviously i will have conversations with people but it's nice and it's healthy for a community to talk to each other i know some people can be like really really shy um some people just i mean i've probably got people in my chat that have followed and have probably lurked and i i i don't even know anything about them but that's how they wish to have it they wish to be lurkers and i'm um, love the lurkers guys you have to love the yeah, lurkers, lurkers like, are the life like every, we every, say it every time yeah lurkers are, lurkers are life like they, they they come in they hang out they're working they, they they might not want to interact they're working but they they like your content they've been back and they keep coming back and i think that's fantastic and um, big up to any any people out there that lurk on the regular because like you you do make you do bolster up those chats you 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 push those numbers up you push people up the directory so then more people can find them and that one person that might then might join might become a valued member of the community and he might be a talker and they might start talking eventually and everything like that but um yeah I, I i don't know it's it's a healthy community is very very much a community that can look after themselves yeah, um and sure. um i'm starting to see that with me now like as i'm growing like which is great um i'm starting to see that it's less of me having to talk to everyone all the time um again I'm not trying to make that sound rude that i don't want to talk to people but it's more um I've, I've got people in my chat now that strike up conversations with each other ask them how each other's days are going what they've been up to at work and stuff like that and it's like i can see that i'm know. always looking at that but it's not it's not necessarily something i have to be involved with but it's nice that i see it because it it gives me a sense of i'm doing something right the people here are the people that i want here and they're looking after each other they're making sure that everyone's okay so um that's always good to see yeah it definitely is so and that, that, as you say this twitch reply thing it might be good to be able to sort of um keep keep those keep those conversations quite quite um anchored down in in a way and and, and yeah. organized so i know with Man, uh, mobile because obviously mobile hasn't been updated to have things like this in it. Um, mm. whenever I was in like Katie Cat's stream or another chat of another stream that I knew had the replies uh, enabled, it does just come up with at the person automatically. So, like, if I was talking to Kit in Katie Cat's chat, it would come up with at Enraged Kitsune, um, and then whatever I had responded to his reply, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and but... funny you mentioned that because they did say that that is something that they're looking at working on um, 
to get that working on mobile as well. Bringing this to mobile, yeah, I yeah. think that would be really good. Yeah, I think I feel like Twitch Mobile um, fall short sometimes of Twitch's updates and stuff like that. Mm. Whether, whether Twitch do do the right updates or not, or people are angry about them, or they, they, people have no view on it at all. Um, I feel like mobile does lack behind um, the desktop version um, a fair amount. Um, while we're talking on things that uh, Twitch are doing um, with with this thing, um, they mentioned obviously they had this tweet out and then they mentioned it today. Uh, one of the guests that they had on for this uh, patch notes thing today, uh, which they are going to be doing on the last Thursday of every month, so we might be talking about it again next month at some point, um, depending on what's covered. Yeah. Um, was the changes to slash me? Slash me command. Right. Can I can I say something yeah. real quick? I'll close this one down because I opened my tweet about this. I found out about this from chilling in Katie Cat's chat. All right. The fact that it's gone italic. Fine, whatever. Like, okay, give people the option so that so if me and my stream, I can put that option on if I see fit to um. To make it so that, you know, I don't have to worry about someone potentially trying to, because I know where you're going with this, potentially um, get, as I put in my tweet, and you can see it on screen, getting fooled by fake donos and shit, right? I personally am dyslexic, right? Reading in color, for me, although my my chat is always in, like, dark mode, so my my writing is in white, <clears throat> I can see people's names pretty clearly because they're always coloured. Um, reading the italics is going to be harder for me as a dyslexic to read than the colour. So I can't uh, understand uh, why they wouldn't think of this. And I have seen a lot of similar comments that in terms of accessibility, it is a lot worse to have them in italics than in colour. Second. Um, I don't think I'll read italics any different to normal text, though, in my, in my personal opinion. See, I, I don't, but I can see that, you know, a lot of people would, so, you know, if you're dyslexic or if you've got uh, vision impairments, it would be a lot more difficult to read something that is uh, in italics. Even, even if they just had it in normal font and wasn't in colour, it would be easier to read than in italics. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's, even to someone who can see clearly, it's not a very obvious uh, choice of font style to use. Uh, you know, you, at a quick glance, you could easily confuse some of the characters, you know, muddle up some words and things. Italics just doesn't stick out for me, like the colour does. Um, mm. whether, whether that's um, for, obviously, like, for your reason, uh, in terms of, like, being dyslexic and stuff, um, <clears throat> obviously you find it easier to, to read read the colour and, 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 and um, sort of... Uh, pick up on that um I, italics just won't stand out for me I'll, I'll miss that 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 will go over my head that will just go over my head color it stands out like it catches your eye right so you know you you, you know there's there's something there but yeah italics is not the one for me personally yeah um and the color was nice um because it was you know very obvious at a glance that it wasn't just a chat message that someone had gone and used slash me and yeah, exactly. well, for <laughs> intended with slash me because it's from like old irc channels and things um it was sort of brought forward um was like okay i'm doing something so sometimes like i've, I've done it in your chat before and traffic it's like i'll use i'll use slash me to say that like i'm bottling up the rage or whatever yeah um and it's usually like in character stuff um and you know, one of the reasons that they changed it to the italics was to make it more obvious that it's coming from the user and isn't like a system message or a, an official message about that user from Twitch or whatever. Um, even though those messages don't come through that way anyway. I don't think anyone's ever perceived them like that. No. I know I, know I haven't. Usually they come up with like the, um, the little block on the left-hand side and with the slightly different coloured background um, and in grey. Oh, I'm, my I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, sti I'm standing by the point of view of they did this to stop people who are being fooled by fake yeah. donos and getting fooled by fake and donos. That was, 
that was the other point as well um was that i was listening to the vod just before the the podcast to make sure i had this quote right um was that it, it, it this is this is the the actual quote from uh, from the person right it it had been abused to put some people in very harmful situations So this uh, is a harmful, harmful situation though like unless you yourself like let's so, so for argument's sake give an example right if i turn around and says oh somebody to donates ten thousand dollars i will jump out my bedroom window and then somebody did a fake then, slash me then yeah that's for one we have we have fiend right for those who don't know who fiend is we had him on episode three of this podcast is a good laugh. He's hella fun to like hang out with. But he likes to troll the fuck out of us. So sometimes he will come into yeah. our chat and he will use slash me and do a, like a fake dono. You can tell the fucking difference. This is why it's I like put in, it in the words in, that it, I put it in. Getting yeah. fooled. Yeah, because you know it happens a lot in a lot of streams, and most of the time I've seen it is like they look at it and go, "What are you doing?" I can tell at a glance that that's not you know genuine. Yeah, and it also come, comes up on your pop up on Twitch anyway. It pops up on your Twitch activity feed. It just goes to show people are watching their activity feed. Like, ugh. So now you've not only ruined it for people who like the color you've ruined it for people like me who have an accessibility reason to want the color you've also ruined it one of the things that katie cat said <clears throat> in her chat was you know the color was nice to see a rainbow and obviously the rainbow is a big part of the lbgtqia um like representation they use rainbow flags and and you know because it's it's comforting. So one of the things that she was saying was she's never going to refresh the, the chat thing because then when somebody uses forward slash me, it was always come up in color. Which basically means now she's never turning her PC off. Like if she did before. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. but Twitch should put it, I think, it is I think the point I'm trying I, to get well, at is things like it. this, right? Things like this, they should put a poll out. Yeah. What I think will happen now that they've done this, if they don't go back on it, is that you'll have all of the extensions like Better CTV, Frank FC, they'll just have they'll replace it with how it used to look anyway. Yeah. They'll they'll change it so it's not an italic. It'll match the color to the element that's before it and all that. It'll just look like it did. Fingers crossed. But and um, if they don't, somebody else will. Hell, I might even have a crack at it later. <coughs> just for yeah. something. You you like you like this one, Kit? Speaking of changing things. Ah, nice. Um, there was a leak put out. Somebody went into the API of Destiny. Um, I think it was the API, anyway. Uh, uh, so, kind of. Uh, can I explain it? Go on. Yeah. Okay. So, there was well, one of the things that Bungie used to sort of like make sure that bits of the site are working properly and keep track of like where people are going from other pages and everything is uh, a Google product called uh, Google Tag Manager. And in one of their scripts that was being served by Google, so like they'd sent in like various tags and then it made the script and then obviously it was pulling from from there to get the script in to to to, to run on their page. Um, they'd accidentally put in the URL for next season's seasonal um, directory. Like you know, you go to this seasons and you've got like the name of the season and it takes you to like all of the info about the season and what's going on. Yeah. Um, that that change had gone live too early on the server and i can see why they probably would have done it um because what you don't want is for something like that to have outdated tags and then not be tracking people around the page properly because you will lose out on a lot of information you know you won't know the people go into that page at all <clears throat> all right i it's it come back to what is currently on screen to just season xxx dot right yeah that's so 
one thing I want to say on this point is, firstly, I found this accidentally. I found out when the name of the, the, the season, if it proves to be true, on Twitter, someone randomly posted it. Um, all right, look, guys, I found out what the next season's called and basically just ruined it for anybody that came across the, pay the post. Um. I have personally, because uh, Cyborg, who we've also had on this podcast, because yeah, we've had a lot of people uh, at this point. Um, <clears throat> he posted a tweet, and I found myself agreeing with it because obviously I'd literally just seen the leak. Um, and he said, "If you are a publication within gaming news and you share a leak on Twitter." you'll find yourself getting a hot block from me. And I was like, okay, I agree with that to a certain extent in a sense of, you know, you don't want things ruined, block them. But there are certain people within, you know, news, community of destiny, you know, Paul Tassi for one comes to mind, who you do want information from when certain information is found. So I was just like, okay, what I'm going to do is I know the name that they have, leaked of this next season so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go into my muted words and mute that season uh name so if anybody else starts talking about it i'm not going to see it and so i muted it and left it at that now i know there's what like two three weeks left of this season so i only muted it for a week so that if bungie then next week goes oh this is the name of the new season I will get that information. Do you know what I mean? And it wouldn't exactly be a massive surprise if they did, because what next week, by the time we come to the episode next week, we'll have less than just just over half a week left until the start of the season. They're gonna want to start getting us prepared. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a uh, next Tuesday. There'll be a no doubt. There'll be maybe another little update that goes live for anything that they need to push for, through for the week after. There'll be a trailer. I, I, it'll be next week. It'll be next Tuesday, I reckon. Thursday at the latest, but I don't think they'll leave it that long. I'm surprised they didn't release anything this evening, but um, yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I can one... imagine they'll do a week in advance. So yeah, see, one of the things I was saying about um, Apex before we went live on the podcast with regards to this is today we've just had the pat lo patch notes for season nine or legacy as they're actually calling it which is the new season of Apex that starts on the 4th, which is, what, next Tuesday? We had that patch note. Monday, we had the Arenas Mode gameplay trailer, you know, introduction to uh, what Arenas is going to be, which is a new game mode that's coming and permanently staying within Apex. Saturday, I think it was, it might have been Friday, we had the new Legacy teaser-like trailer, as it, as it were. You had... Here's what the new legend's called. Here's a, a sneak peek at some of the things. And then come back on Monday for the gameplay trailer. Um, we need to get that between now and Tuesday, I think. Something along those lines with Bungie. Because if not, like you said, I think Thursday next week, then they'll be leaving it way too late uh, to get people hyped. Uh, one thing I am happy about is I'm going to have a week with the new Apex season before... I'm like, oh, you know what? I want to check out the, the Destiny season. But one thing I will say yeah. right now, and people can fucking clip it from the podcast, um, if the seasonal trailer, the, the what looks to be on offer, does not wow me, do not be surprised if you see my Destiny 2 playtime tank like a motherfucker. Because one of the main things that I have always done in Destiny was grind power. So my my thing yeah. every season was go from, you know, thirteen ten to thirteen sixty. Well, that's not going to be a thing next season. It's going to thirteen twenty. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of hot and cold on the the whole uh, pinnacle uh, cap thing, hard uh, on on the grind the the light level grind. I understand why Bungie are doing it. It makes it more accessible for people that can't play the game as much um, to get them no, ready. I agree with uh, that. For, 
GMs quicker. I, I, I completely agree with it, but I also don't agree because for me, it's part of the grind. It always has been. Um, that's going to be taken away now. If there are things added to the season, um, more, more little uh, uh, storylines, more activities and et cetera, whatever they do with the season, they've been obviously quite good with the last two seasons with giving us um, Presage and uh, Harbinger. Obviously, they've been yeah. very good with that. And they, they, they've been nice additions, doing them week in, week out, collecting lore, getting more story, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't expect one of those missions every season, but as long as we've got something there to I think, I can't us... remember who it was, but somebody was saying it. I was in a stream the other day, and someone was saying it, and I think it perfectly sort of um sums up what most people would be potentially happy with within um like destiny's content throughout the year right so you get a new raid with every big expansion some point in the year you get a returning raid obviously next season we've got vog um <laughs> one of those missions uh either every season or every two seasons because obviously there's four seasons in a year you could do one this uh one with the season after the expansion season because obviously like with beyond light we had season of the hunt so you wouldn't put one in season of the hunt you'd put one in season of chosen then whatever the next season's called you wouldn't put one in and then the final season of the year obviously it's going to be a bit different with which queen being delayed uh this year but in that final season you would put um another one in there you could maybe even substitute that out for another dungeon so it'd be kind of like prophecy was in season of arrivals you know you get your new dungeon it's free to play for all players um and hey presto sort of thing um, yeah that's the, I, I feel like as long as they're lucky to have that yeah and as long as they stay on a store a constant story beat that people can catch up on and then progress going through the year that leads into the next expansion you know we had um the darkness could arrive in season of arrivals then it was this big thing of all right we've got to go to europa um even in the final mission for the arrivals storyline you know we we finished off nocris and then we went to the room with uh the statues of all the different races there was a pyramid ship and it said something about uh power awaits you on europa and then beyond light comes we go to europa you know we interact with the um what's it called the, the the ship sent down where we get a stasis powers i forget what it's called uh but anyway we get the stasis powers and then boom you know the progression in the story sort of thing and we're doing it the same now with the seasonal stuff you know we had season of the hunt introduced crow back into the mix and we season of the chosen he's got a huge role in you know keeping zavala alive um supposedly is going to have more and more um of a role going forward this year if that's like a common law thread that links all the sh seasons together is seeing the crow progress i think that'd be great and the same thing with like future seasons if they start off with um a story beat kind of like they did with beyond light with the darkness obviously I actually started the season before but and then progress it I don't see why people would have an issue. And then those that want the story with regards to like the missions that you like you said, chaps, going into Presage every week and going and grinding out the scannables and getting that story, you can go and do it. For those who don't, they still have the content there to play. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I I like these um these missions they've been added in. They've they've been they've been a nice little touch. They've been a nice little um uh a nice little activity for people to do uh with other players um they've been challenging and sorts some obviously some weeks um especially with harbinger become a little bit harder with with whatever the boss variation is that week but yeah. they're they're also a nice little i and i like, like to think of them as a nice introductory to soloing as well uh people that they're not the most difficult activities within destiny and they're very much manageable solo but very much gives people an opportunity to tackle a piece of content um that has uh you thinking about what you need to take in um how you how you should uh sort your loadouts your mods etc 
and take on a piece of content um, for the first time solo. So I, I, I love that Harbinger sort of brought that into the Destiny um, universe. I love that we got a hard mode for um, uh, for Presage. I thought that was great on a time limit going through. Um, obviously, having to do that solo as well as as, as a challenge, I think is is incredible. Um, just need to put some more 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 loot behind these um these harder activities um we didn't get anything for soloing uh harbinger we got nothing yeah. we, not even a shader just give us a shader a shader an emblem that's that's all that's all we want and people will chase it um same same with presage um you don't get anything for solo flawlessing it on hard mode you don't get anything for it it's 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 literally just a title a, a triumph that's ticked off um I think but if, if you get flawless, you get the um, the emblem, don't you? But you don't have yeah, to do that solo. Yeah, you get that. But I mean, doing it solo flawless <clears> in hard mode, which is again, that's that's a bit more of a, a tougher ask um, for people. But sure. people are doing yeah. it. But you get nothing for it. You don't get anything for it. Like, um, I mean, they they want people to do these activities over like and 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 test themselves. Give us something to work for. It's 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 the same uh, with. Um, uh prophecy um solo flawlessing that like i don't think can you can you get the um items anymore from that i don't think you can i am not um, sure i don't think you can anymore but that that was an amazing piece of content i personally did it i personally solo flawless. i did it, it took me it took me I don't, I don't know i did it on like my sixth go or something like that seventh go um and one of the best things I've ever done in Destiny. One of the best things I've ever done in Destiny. Um, but there's no incentive for people to do it now because there's no loot behind it. Yeah, Bring that's... the loot back and people will try it again and it will give um, people something to do. That's to, my little to go claim back to fame a little bit. Moment. <laughs> Thanks. I was, I was just going to say, to go back a little bit to what you were saying before about um, the, the presage being a, a good intro to, to solo and things, was that before we had hard, uh, hard mode, and knowing that I wouldn't get anything out of it because I'd looked at like the triumphs and things, I ran, attempted to run, and managed to do it uh, once. I've managed to do it again since. Uh, but I ran presage solo flawless one week just to see if I could do it. Because I had attempted the dungeons a couple of times and not been able to quite get through the encounters um and obviously you know i, I had I had Jeff there to, like you know sort of little tips and, and stuff because he'd run it before on xbox um yeah but one of the things i will stand by is the solo flawless dungeons now is a whole lot harder in my opinion not only because they've changed obviously how the mission um ai it works when beyond light came out uh you know with the whole what was it 3.0 update or whatever they did um i forget what it was it was run on but now it's like run on a different thing uh so the ai rather than you know just knowing that they need to shoot in a certain direction because that's where you are they know exactly where you are etc etc or the the mission ai that sort of controls where the AI will position themselves now, rather than just knowing that there's a squad in that room with you that you are trying to kill. It now knows where in each individual member of that squad is. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I think that one, that made it harder. And then two, the fact that um, Prophecy lost the use of the Taken mods and the Hive mods were completely removed from the game for uh, Pit of Heresy. Uh, I've been in once, uh, basically with the exact same build I went in, minus the uh, the Hive mods, to Pit of Heresy, and I didn't even manage to get through the first encounter before I died. So, <clears throat> admittedly, yes, I was trying it on PC, and previously I'd done it on Xbox, and I feel a whole lot faster on PC because of the frames. I've said that in the past as well. Um... But yeah, that's my little bit of a claim to fame. Uh, whenever anybody like asks me, "Oh, can you do this? Can you do that?" and it's like, "Well, I did solo like, or can you? Do you think you could solo flawless presage?" It's like, I I I've done it and died once, like in the boss room, so I know I could do it given you know enough incentive. 
probably not within the time limit for the the harder version um but my little like claim to fame whenever anybody says oh why do you think you could do it is like well i did solo flawless prophecy in pit at 30 fps on xbox so if you think i couldn't given the same exact like build that i've got that i had back then if you think i couldn't do it again on pc then you know where i can turn a whole lot easier and shit do you know what i mean like <clears throat> yeah it's certainly become harder without the mods now um for sure um you can still do it with determination and and and, and making the best of the mods that you've already got on everything but yeah it, it has become harder um in terms of how much damage you can take and the resistance and everything like that so um but i mean it's a challenge for people to strive for but at the moment there's no there's no need to go for it because you're not going to get anything out of it anyway so mm. it seems a bit of, um uh, <coughs> well my pit of, of shame really my pit of heresy run i called um cardboard arm man and wraith bound uh who i mentioned earlier when we was on about the music that we came into the podcast on um i called them both my lucky charms because literally the day that i was like streaming it doing it um they both came in uh and stuck around until i finished they're on the u.s time zone so you know it was quite late in the the morning for them talking four or five in the morning um when i started doing it and um yeah they stuck around to the end saw me finish it um and to this day there's still a clip there that kit got um and my friend hans turned into a sound alert for me that i haven't yet to use but it's me going when i finished it um because oh, i was just playing casually through it like if i get it i get it do you know what i mean um me just going yes fuck yes because i was that happy i'd done it um and then yeah, the yeah. funny story with the prophecy is just going through playing uh got to the end a few times there's a fail clip a couple fail clips on my um my channel with regards to prophecy uh one of which kit turned into a funny little video that had some copyrighted music playing so i couldn't actually like upload it anywhere <laughs> um but it was it was pretty funny well, uh, it was very very to... close yeah. and i you can I, use it yeah it was a very close um to me doing it on stream and I, and i just made one simple mistake of going to where he was going the, the boss the kel was going to teleport to and i realized it jumped and as i jumped he teleported to it stomped and pushed me off the map so i failed um but then the next the very next day <clears throat> yeah the very next day i was um i was not like i i had my day off from stream and i was like you know what the only way i'm actually gonna get this is if i practice it so let's go and practice you know some more even when i'm not on stream because i was avoiding practicing it off stream because i didn't want to get it off stream and lo and behold that's what happened <laughs> so yeah it was eventually just you know like you say grit and determination you can do do it but it's it's whether it's worth doing it in a sense of like i didn't do solo flawless uh harbinger i've done solo pro harbinger i did it day one um just because i wanted to get through the mission you know um yeah but because there yeah, is no reason to do the solo flawless i've not done that there'll be people that do it regardless but i mean for a lot of people, they'll try it if there's an incentive there. They'll try it. They'll give it a go. They'll give it their hardest. Mm -hmm. But if there's no incentive there, I mean, it just there's no, there's no point. There's the, well, I mean, you're not getting anything out of it. Why put your fruit self? I mean, some people don't mind putting themselves through 12 hours of agony getting something done. But not many people would do that without an incentive. Right. And on the uh, loose, loosely on the topic of not getting that out of it, um, our next topic. The... Um, so, 
I say loosely because they did end up getting some stuff out of it, but um, Jamie Jones on Twitter, um, one of the concept artists, I believe, from Destiny, uh, before they had a final vision for it. Um, back when it's so, it was so early that we still thought we were making a fantasy game. Um, so if you can see the screen, so if you're, if you're here now or if you're watching on YouTube, um, you should be able to see some of the pieces of artwork there. Um, if, you, if you can open the one of the tree, uh, please, Trap. Yep. Ah, I recognize that. I thought you were going to say that. Um, the general shape of that tree does look very familiar. So, so I was saying this sort of loosely is that, you know, obviously they've got these these regions, these worlds that they had planned. Um, and they did sort of use some of them, you know, at least take inspiration from, from this art. Um, and it's, you know, from, from 2008. You know. For reference, I think... The it's last Halo game yeah. that they did was 2007, I think, I want to say. I'm sure Reach was 2007. Yeah, well, the, before, before was, was saying this so early, they thought we were making a fantasy game. That's yeah. not going to be the second one. Well, that's going to be before D1. Yeah, I know, but that's what I'm saying. That they, they basically yeah. started working on Destiny from the moment they finished Halo, essentially, is what I'm saying. So goes to show when they signed that deal with Activision they already had what they thought was going to be Destiny you know sort of planned out in a sense at least in its basic yeah. terms with this artwork do you know what I mean um mm. so but yeah it's it's interesting to see like you could argue as well that this uh castle type uh scenery you've got here with the um is essentially the last city do you know what I mean different you know architecture and stuff but and you you got the giant wall around it but kind of gets the same vibes yeah that's yeah. what i'm saying so um but yeah i don't have a segue into this next one so we're just gonna go no, with the hot fix they've changed a few things you know fixed a few known issues from last week's bob um so they're up on screen right now and then, speaking of the TWAB, it is available. So we're just going to go quickly that through time it. of the episode. Yeah. We're nearing the end because of the TWAB. And today's is kind of interesting, but also short ish. There's like two main sections. Uh, so we just head through those now. Okay. So the main section read. Yay. We've got a date for VOG. We have a date oh, for VOG. Yes. The so 10 a.m. PDT on May the 22nd. So that'll be 6 p.m. for us on Saturday 22nd. Yep. Yeah. So. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. I'm not sure whether I'll have people to run it with, but hey. At some point I'll run it. That's, that's all. I'm, I want to see what they've changed. For one thing, um, so so you did a race back then. No one really knew what to expect from this highly challenging cooperative activity. There was mystery and excitement in the air. That set the stage for all future races to come. And this is the first re raid returning from the content vault, which is quite fitting considering it was the first raid they ever did in Destiny as well. Um, so they've got a new type of world first raid it will launch with contest mode which is in there for 24 hours we need to be 1300 power so we're all already you know there if we're at season if we're at um seasonal power cap right now um we'll already be there if you're at pinnacle cap next season you're obviously just going to be over the yeah. over the, the cap but it will be bringing yeah so this guy is but being shipped to... Oh, even if you're higher, higher. Even, even, even if you're higher, higher. it's on contest. So, yeah, you know, so you're not going to get much benefit from it. You need to be at 1,300 power to be at cap for all the counters. So, yeah, basically, as long as you've hit hard cap, you'll be ready to go for the raid when it, yeah. when it ships. Yeah. Uh, clearing VOG with contest mode active is the first step. 
to access the new challenge mode in the director. Oh, so yeah, so you would need to complete it once before getting the challenges available, and then need to do it again with the challenges to mm. complete the race. And the Tempo's Edge Triumph. Oh. Completing Tempo's Edge is a curated list of triumphs. This is newly unlocked challenge That's mode. the first time you just do it twice. Yeah. At least. Uh, oh, will be so how... you have to complete it first. Yeah. If, from the sound of things, you have to complete it first on a, like a normal mode, and then with contest mode activated, and then complete it again on a challenge mode with contest mode activated. Ah, well, I can see this being cleared in. No, no, no. Okay, here's is is what, what's going to be interesting, right? Depending on how long it takes to to complete the raid with contest mode on within the first twenty four hours, would you have some fire teams taking the gambit and being like, okay, because it doesn't say that you have to have contest mode on once you play in challenge mode. I'd assume it's automatically on. Yeah. Mm. You you so I don't I don't know if challenge mode is going to automatically include contest or if that's not going to have contest on once the twenty four hours are up, like normal mode won't. I'd assume it's so going to automatically it, have it on. How much? I would I would hope so because otherwise you're going to end up with some you, fire teams like going straight in and then, then you'll have some have wait normal mode twenty four hours before starting the challenge and knowing that there's not. Yeah. You know what I mean. You have normal mode and contest mode, and then they can turn around and go, look, we give you a prestige raid. Boom. Done. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. That That's what they said they were bringing with the dungeons as well. They're bringing a hard mode dungeons. They're bringing hard mode um, raids back. They said this, what, earlier this year in the state of the game. Yeah, but like, I don't think just having contest on is enough for to, to, to earn it being a, a hard mode. And bearing in mind that like you can't even get to challenge mode unless you clear vault contest on so within the first 24 hours so you have to complete it twice so basically you have to complete the raid twice on uh contest mode but the second time you do it there will be added challenges to it mm -hmm. I, I feel like with contest mode even though that's going to be there that first clear is going oh, yeah, to within, within, within an hour and a half two hours max yeah so yeah yeah you, you're right um because I've just scrolled down past that image and it says the challenge mode and the triumph will only be available for the first 24 hours anyway. Oh, um, okay. Okay, so basically you complete it first to unlock the node. Then the node's only available for the 24 hours. Then that disappears. So you will have yeah. to... Essentially, the world's first race starts whenever the first team gets into the challenge mode. No. So you have to I unlock don't, the challenge mode I don't think it is. I think it starts from when it comes out, but in order to reach the point where you can claim Worlds first, you have to complete it once, and then complete the mode, complete it again with the challenges on. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it reads. That that's how, what I'm saying. That's how, how in in actual it. in actuality, when you think about it, the the world's people who um. I think what Chaps was trying to get at with regards to how quick it's going to be cleared, because it's a well-known raid, you know, people can go back and play it in D1, and those who never played D1 and don't want to go back and play D1 can go and watch it on YouTube or whatever, do you know what I mean? Um, That's what I'm saying there, is you, that because... You, the because the raid is going to be lot. cleared initially very quickly, so in actuality, yeah. the world's first race won't actually start until the first team gets into challenge mode. Because that's when the actual no, it won't, race it won't really start. start until you've got a couple of teams in challenge mode. Because if you think that you've got a good chance if you're the first into challenge mode, if you finish like the first initial completion first, right? Mm. But if you if you then fuck up all the challenges and the next team that finishes the raid gets through the challenges quicker than you, they're gonna, you know, be ahead. Yeah. But that's why I that's why I'm saying it starts when the first team ends up in challenge mode because if they do fuck up other teams can see why they fucked up and go okay we'll correct that yeah if oh, they're well, watching well. do you know what i mean and if not yeah if they're, they're and watching. they do just do it better again yeah it, it started when that actually, first team got in there i think that this world's first race 
I would enjoy watching a little bit more than yeah. other ones. Um, mainly because obviously everyone already knows most of the encounters, right? Didn't do know the raid. They've done the raid before. But these challenges sound like they're sort of, sort of more puzzle-like than simply yeah. throwing a different type of enemy at you. And I like watching puzzles. Like when Niobe Labs came out, I was all over that. Like I wasn't playing it, but I was watching it everywhere. Yeah. And then they got changes to the linear fusions, heavy weapon rolls. Got a guy, Chris Proctor, in to talk about uh, it. A lot of changes to weapons and perks. Yeah. yeah. Um, where was the other main thing you wanted us to look at? Yeah. No, this is the second one, because there's a lot of, like, balance and stuff. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to read through all that, because I'm conscious on time. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can scroll through and... um. Have a look and see what's going on. They are both uh, big swings and incremental changes. Yeah, so their their damage per bullet is only going up by one. But when you've got that many bullets in a short space of time, that does that up. Yeah, um, subsistence is getting no longer getting a buff as well. No longer reduces reserve ammunition and sub and submachine guns now receive the same ammo ammo fraction per takedown as auto rifles. Uh, was ten percent like most weapons. No longer reduces reserve ammunition. Not reducing the reserves is, is huge. Yeah, huge. Oh. I'm gonna use that a whole lot more than I already did. It was such a pain did. on. It was such like I don't know. And what did it say? It said submachine guns now receive the same ammo fraction per takedown or rifles. That's great because on submachine guns it was a useless perk. It was useless. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite Basically, things to well, use when I was good. doing my uh, solo flawless. Uh, prophecy was my subsistence demolitionist gnawing hunger because of the fact that it was um, demolitionist I was using devour so anytime I was weak I could just eat my grenade because I'd have it back like basically guaranteed yeah. um, and then obviously I'm running transversives as well so anytime I needed to reload because I wasn't killing a bunch of ads with, with subsistence I'd just run reload boom done um Dragonfly, it's always been bugged so it wouldn't proc on heavy shanks and servitors, but now it will, apparently. Hey! Um, hit fire grip. Oh, that's a um, I The iron perks are getting less of a uh, stat penalty. Oh, thank God for that. Which is just good. I like this one actually, um, more specifically because I currently run Arc. But the the elemental capacitor, um, but it's getting a stasis subclass um, section. Mm. Yeah. So the thing is with the wet. You... Yeah. They so were you'll have uh, it was a, stasis a recoil user. direction and reduced ADS move speed penalty. That's cool. Quite like that. There's the. Uh, just the bottom there, they've got the changes to Slavity and Bottomless Creep they'd already mentioned. Yeah. Fresh. Uh, change has already gone live. It's not, and not a buff so much as a bug fix. Fresh unintentionally worked in PvP for certain weapons in Beyond Light. But Fresh has worked for all weapons in PvP since Season of Chosen launch, which we obviously heard about from tweets and stuff. Uh, mods, Adept Mods. Uh, adept mag and adept targeting same reason as the iron banner perk we're cautious initially but think it's fine to reduce the penalties for these perks see them in action so the secondary stat penalty from each is being reduced from minus 20 to minus 15 and adept mag is being fixed with not granting reserves when applied to a sword um I think the only other depth sword we have right now is Solar Scar, which I don't yeah. have personally, so cool. it doesn't affect oh, well. me anyway. Um, it could be something to chase at some point if you're really bothered. <laughs> me, flawless trials. Yeah, yeah. have you seen me in <laughs> PvP? <laughs> yeah, no, it, no, it's I'm me like that Bambi. doesn't. Seem I'm like Bambi skating on ice. Holy hell! Um, a depth counterbalance. Doesn't feel enough of a change over the counterbalance stock to be worthwhile, so they've increased it 
the recoil direction benefit. I did see a lot of people turn around and saying, what's the point in using counterbalance, uh, adept counterbalance when counterbalance does the exact same thing? So, um, yeah, I want to address that with this change. Uh, my does Catalyst is changing. It's not going to be Outlaw. It's going to be no distractions now. Uh, Hawkmoon increased priority of ch power causal charge and power causal shot. Both text. This was sometimes dropping to the bottom of the list. You didn't really know that you had, you know, the the buff going. Uh, I mean, if you if you if you were careful enough with your shots, you just yeah, wait until the hawk sound played and you then you you definitely know that yeah uh anyway uh things they're going to touch on after uh, further into season 14 is shotguns in general uh and dead man's tail oh thank god they're touching dead man's tail <laughs> yeah so you see with the, they'll come in there after 120 hand cannon range so expecting to see a surge in its usage which is already high uh, they didn't want to try and squeeze this in at the same time at the start of the season so they're going to touch it later on yeah. Yeah, that's gonna um, be a huge nerf. <laughs> and fusion rifles, as with some of our other changes, we don't want to bump these too much, too fast. They will follow up if needed. Okay, and then obviously that talking about the hotfix that went out, Guardian Games Bungie rewards, weekly known issues. Um. Then we've got Film School, which is the movie of the week. We don't actually show them on the podcast. We just say, look, you know, these are the guys that are going to go, yeah, go, go and watch them for yourself, really. <laughs> then we've got the artists. Um, I really like that picture of Zavala. Looks very uh, stoic. Yeah, yeah, it does. The and shade then, uh, is very good, I think. Yeah, so then there's a little synopsis of the Guardian games here from Cosmo. Uh, less than two weeks before we usher in a new season. Keep your eyes peeled for more info next week. So we, that kind of implies we're going to get the name of the season, maybe a trailer next week, as we was discussing earlier in the podcast. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the, the TWAB right there. We will get into coming to the end of the podcast let me close that down right there and um, we're doing about spot on for time i say uh, yeah. considering it's about the same length as every other episode <laughs> i mean we, we've actually, we actually finished the, we've actually finished <laughs> the twab bang on 12 o'clock so at least there is that um yeah that's nice so so closing in the, like the closing remarks firstly thank you very much chaps for taking the time out of your evening to come and uh, have a chat with us very very welcome thanks for having me thanks for having me um very much appreciate it uh where can people find you obviously we had your twitch channel open for um those that are live viewing and i'm on my youtube channel um but for those that are listening on the varied uh, podcast platforms that kit puts this on uh, where can people find you? Uh, like Twitch, Twitter, anything else you want to? Uh, so um, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash chaps underscore 28. And then you can find me on Twitter. So that's just uh, forward slash chaps underscore 28 is my name on there. So same on both. Um, you can find me on either of those. I'm only I'm only currently on Twitter. I, I, I should really get onto other platforms. I really should. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm quite... Um, I'm, uh, I'm quite prevalent on Twitter, so I'm always around there. So come and come and hang by. Come and hang hang by. Appreciate it. Uh, and um, lastly, the question, and I usually leave this one to Kit. So go on, Kit. Ah, uh, <laughs> I, I, I say that you, you say that you normally leave it to me, but you've only been doing that the past three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it, to echo uh, Trev from before, you know, it's been been a blast having you on. Um, Thanks, thanks for coming on. But um, if we were to ask you to come on again, uh, firstly, you know, would you consider it? Um, and uh, who would you like to be on with, or who would you like to see on uh, in future episodes? 
Well, absolutely. I'd love to come back at some point if you guys have me. But um, I would have said Grandad Gaming, but you've already uh, covered that. <laughs> yeah, already covered that next week. For next week. Because um, he's a super cool dude. But um, I would say probably my Twitch bro, um, Scott the Dude. You might know him from other various yeah. channels. But um, Scott the Dude's been... Um, he's been there for me pretty much uh, from day one. Um, he's, he's always been really supportive of me. Um he now streams. Um, he started a good few months after me, but he's been going for sort of, I think a good seven, eight months now. Um, he does Tuesday evenings um, and Saturday as well and Sunday, um, uh, sort of Sunday and Saturday mornings. Um, he's a Scottish guy. He's nice and chill. Um, he can be a bit lewd at times, but who, who, <laughs> who isn't, I suppose. But um, he, he, he's a good guy and he's, he's always a good laugh to chat to. So um, yeah, he certainly seems that way. A couple from... of beers in him and I'm <coughs> sure he'll be all yours. <laughs> uh, sure, uh, from from interacting with him in your chat and uh, granddad's uh, the odd occasion i've seen him in there too um yeah he does seem like a really cool dude so yeah we'll, yeah, uh, we'll so. add him to our list which is actually getting really long <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. um but yeah again thank you very much for coming on we're going very to welcome. I'm I'm in two minds now, Kit. Do we raid Otis or do we raid Kirby? Who do you think? Uh, I'd, 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 I'd raid Kirby, as was the original plan. Yeah, he is trying to get his affiliate, so I'd appreciate everybody to that would go across there. Um, Otis, myself, uh, Jimmy, Five, all of us that are part of uh, Just Wipe It have been like lurking in his stream chatting with him you know help trying to help him get to that uh milestone so appreciate if people go along with it <clears throat> um if you are a sub to the channel you can use my emotes i'm sure kit's probably going to post them before i manage to because he normally does yep probably kit because my fucking thing is lagging as it always does okay I've, I've, there you I, go. I did think you'd be able to get there ahead of me because I didn't have it like, um, well, I mean, it was on my clipboard, but I didn't have it open. Okay, anyway, uh, <laughs> intrepid city emotes uh, in the chat. Um, if you are subbed or you want to you know, claim them with some of those wonderful channel points that you may or may not have claimed by watching, um, you can get those for 24 hours. If you don't, uh, then you have the uh, Twitch raid emotes as well. Which I think I've got on my clipboard somewhere. No, really? Oh, oh well. Just a moment, and I'll put those in the chat as well. There we go. Hey, you beat me to it. So copy those. Add in, uh, add in whatever any any way you much you've got, and that's uh, that's us grace this chat with all those wonderful, yeah, wonderful just little pictures. Bam the hell out of them. If you've got chaps as emotes as well, and you've been here lurking, uh, thank you very much. Firstly, for coming on over uh, and listening to the conversation, uh, but also just spam away. Any emotes you've got that basically can tell him, look, we're here to s say hi and, and like support him. Uh, and very much appreciate it. But again, thank you very much, chaps, for coming on. And um, for thank those you of very much. <clears throat> and for those of you that are listening on the various platforms and you uh, watching on YouTube, thank you very much for watching and listening, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.